maybe she was just so overwhelmed with joy with joy and like <laughs> I mean she probably I mean you know she got a new husband who's 20 Thanks. years younger yeah, than her yeah. and can last a little bit longer than 60 year olds this is before the blue pill yeah yeah and so maybe they it was a little too much <laughs> a little too much she had a heart attack staring off at the sea and fell over maybe 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 massive stroke maybe he pushed her maybe he pushed her Hey, this is Jerome. This is Ginger. And it's North Platte in a nutshell, and we're going old school. We are back at the Lincoln County Historical Museum. We are joined by Jim, as you can see if you're if you're watching. And Daisy. And Daisy. Yeah, you can't see, yeah, Daisy the museum dog. Right. <laughs> um, and we're just gonna go like old old style, straight off the we don't have our mic set up or anything like that. Um, but as we're recording this, it is the night before Halloween. And Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> And Ginger had a great idea for a Halloween episode. So why don't you go ahead and let our loyal... So we have a ton of really spooky, scary stories because of obviously our history with the West and everything. And so we kind of got a hold of Jim to see if he would maybe tell us a few of them. Him and Casey from the, mu- or from the library um, often correspond with each other and just kind of work together on these stories and just doing the research and everything. So Jim's going to tell us some of them. Yeah. Plus, I did hear something back there, and he said, no, it's just oh, this museum. Oh, it's just the museum <laughs> moving because it's so cold outside and warm in here. Uh-huh. So sure. it's the, the old, it's the building settling excuse. Never mind the fact that some woman got scared here last week in Peter Pants. <laughs> is that a true story? This is a true story, but it happened to be in our haunted village. Okay. I mean, and we're talking not just, ah, pee a little. We're talking, ah, I peed my pants. <laughs> <laughs> it must be very scary then. Yes, it's good. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I heard it. I heard it was really good this year. Yeah, I I think the uh, girls from the softball team did a really good job. Um, and of course, when you see this, you'll probably be too late. But we have one more night. So on Halloween night. On Halloween night. I don't know we might get this up tonight. We, yeah, we might get it up tonight or or first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning. Yeah. So. Seven thirty to ten Halloween. And right. you know what? If there's anybody that has kids, you can bring the kids out hour before. When it's not scary and they get trick or treating. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, okay, so, you got cool. a safe place to bring kids to get a bunch of candy because we don't have very many kids come, so they get lots Until of candy. Now. Well, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be great. A lot of kids, please come. And please. if you're down in McCook, my brother Paul gives full size candy bars out. So just tell him that. <laughs> and where's he at? Uh, he... <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I'm just saying. <laughs> so. A street in McCook. In McCook. <laughs> a street in McCook, right. <laughs> I always love the full-size house. Uh, you, when you find it and you tell all your friends, like, that's the full-size house. I'm the full-size house. You're the full-size house? I'm the full-size house. Heck yeah. Because right. out where we live, like, we have, like, six kids on our block, and that's it. And nobody ever thinks, like, oh, yeah, let's go down this really dark dirt road and see what's mm-hmm. there. Nobody ever thinks that. See, and I live on B, so yeah, I... get hammered. <laughs> yeah, I get hammered. I with... suppose my brother on A is going to get hammered? Probably. Yeah. I'll have to better tell him to get a lot. Yeah. But, okay, so I used to live over on Elder, which is off of A, and we actually thought we were going to get a ton of trick-or-treaters. We really never did have that many, ever. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe it's just you guys. Maybe. Maybe. But I dress my dog up as a shark. She looks cute. She actually looks like she's getting eaten by the shark rather than she is the shark. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. If you come out here, it's quite, quite fun, I think. Uh, we sometimes have some long lines, but just come with a good coat. And, well, and that's, and, yeah, I mean, that's a good endorsement is a woman Peter Pants. It's scary as fuck. <laughs> you should put that, you should put that on next year's poster. So scary that a woman peed her pants that, last year yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Or, or see, you know how they do reviews? See, I don't know if you know who that woman is and we're not going to no, name no. her here. No, no, she was, I think, kind of intoxicated. Okay, oh. <laughs> but still. It would be great to have So Scary I Peed My Pants as like a quote from her on, oh. ne- on the poster next year. T-shirts. Yes, T-shirts. So Scary I Peed My t-shirts. Pants. T-shirts. There you go. Nice. On the back, put Scary AF. Yeah, Scary AF. <laughs> Hashtag Scary AF. You can see Daisy. She's trying to get the yeah. picture here. Anyways. Uh, so, um, there have been, you were telling us a, a few unsolved mysteries, some weird deaths. Uh, things like that in Lincoln County, in you know North Platte. Um, 
you know, kind of fitting for Halloween. Just some right. kind of unsolved mysteries, weird Dateline type stuff. So, well, you know, I mean, you got the first one. It's not really a mystery, mm-hmm. but it's like pure evil, and that would be Annie Cook right. killing her daughter with a frying pan. Yeah, I mean, come on, how more gruesome can that be? Right. Oops, I hit her in the head, and then not get you know even come up for trial for it. Right. And for those of you who who don't know the Ann Cook story, maybe you're new to town or you just haven't heard it. Um, she was a woman who lived during Prohibition era. Yep. Uh, just outside of uh, Brady, correct? No, no, actually between here and Hershey. Hershey. Here and Hershey, that's right. Not Brady, Hershey. Sorry, got my... Um, the family actually had to have the house exercised. Really? Yeah, there was some really weird stuff going on. So I, huh. my best friend uh, is from Hershey, Hershey, and she knew the family that lived in there. And when they bought the place... She won't let you stop. She yeah, won't. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be petted dog. <laughs> I'm going to try. All right. Um, where was I at? Oh, she said that when the people bought the house, they actually started to remodel it, and they found the weirdest stuff inside the walls, like children's shoes, and just weird, weird, weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Chicken bones. Oh, that's Chicken creepy. bone, chicken bone. <laughs> well, and yeah, I, I mean, if you hear that, you if you've read Evil Obsession, and I still think, and I know there was talk a while back about uh, somebody making a movie out of it. Yeah, I've um, actually seen the film... Uh, script. Oh, okay. But that's about as far as it went, I right. think. Oh, okay. I, I think it would be a fascinating movie, and it would probably be one of those, if the stuff in Evil Obsession is true, which, I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> um, no no reason to think it's not, because mm-hmm. uh, the woman who wrote it did her research and everything. Um, it would be one of those movies that I think if you if you stayed true to life and you put everything in it, it would be one of those movies that people watch and go, there is no way that that happened. That that happened. Yep. Yeah. They've embellished something. Yep. Yep. Um, when I read the book, I was like, there is no way in hell this woman got away yeah. with this kind of stuff. Blatant yeah. murders. Yeah. 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 Uh, letting people die. I mean, at her, well, uh, for or, those. Or knocking them off and dumping them in the river. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And Just her daughter, like... that was the big one. I'm like, this, this bitch is going down for this. And I'm like, I'm not even halfway through the book. There's no way there's more to this story. Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. I right. Can, I can still can't get over what she did to her niece with taking the poker and just sticking it in the mole right there. And just, oh. oh, my God. For those who don't know the the backstory, uh, again, if you're new to the area, you haven't heard the story, <clears throat> just to kind of give a brief synopsis, she was a woman who lived Prohibition era. Um, as the story goes, she went to Lincoln, right, or Omaha, fell in with a madam, decided she wanted to live that life, Came back to North Platte and basically began running whorehouses. Um, you know, she, then she took over the poor farm. Yeah, she took over mm-hmm. the poor farm, uh, which is what I was talking about, letting people die. And back then, the poor farm could be anybody from somebody in poverty to somebody with a mental illness or like right. uh, mental retarda- retardation of some kind, Downs or something like that. Those people were sent off to poor farms. She got money for each person that was there, and then they would all just mysteriously end up dying. Yeah, when they could no longer work her farm. Yeah, she'd work them to death, Yeah, basically. The most heartbreaking one for me was the boy that she took on. Yeah, she well, she killed her mom, his mom, yeah, to, to mm-hmm. take him. Yeah. yeah, to take him, so she had a boy to work on the farm. Joe, Joe. And yeah. I'll tell you what, our blacksmith worked with Joe oh, in the God. shops. Yeah. And when this book came out, he decided to ask him. And he said, Joe... Is this really this bad? And he said, "You don't want to know," which means that book didn't even go into the worst of it. Well, and that's the thing. Like you can read historical accounts or get witness statements or what have you, but you don't know everything that happened unless you lived there. Yeah. And you were there day to day, and this guy, you know, was. Yep. Um, yeah, and it's just the the stuff in that book is stomach turning. And she had she had everybody bought off. So then basically, in the end, she didn't get her Cummins. No one, she was never prosecuted at all. No. People were anything. scared of her, People too. People were scared of her. Yeah. Well, and something that it made a note of in the book was that she uh, didn't necessarily deal in money, although she did. She dealt in information. Oh, she had yeah. blackmail. She had oh, yeah. dirt on everybody. The judges, the sheriffs, everybody who was Because they would come her. to her brothels. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. And they did change the names in the book. Which I have the real list. Yes. So mm-hmm. there is a real list floating around, but they did change some of the names in the book. From what I understand, some of those names that were changed, the real names, they're, they're still names you can find in the well, phone book yeah. today. Even like the names that are in the book, 
you can still to this day, I'm like, okay, wait a second. I know these aren't reals, but I know there's a family in town with that last name. So. Yeah. Or you can just do your research and look up yeah. who was sheriff during from this year to this that, year. Who yep. was mayor from this yeah. year to this year. Who was the guy that was the coroner that was writing off on all the deaths she had. Yeah. 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 And everybody was, and that's the thing. Everybody the was way, in on it. By the way, he, he's named after our lake. Maloney? Maloney. Maloney. Yeah. A lake is named after him. <laughs> <laughs> A coroner who helped a woman get away with countless murders. Mm-hmm. I mean, who knows how many? Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. Gets a, lake, gets, gets a lake named after him. I bet, I bet she uh, bought that for him. Or how many least. people do you think are in there? Oh! Shush! What? Oh, yeah. You, she swims you in like it. that lake. You <laughs> swim in that. In you it. swim in dead people. Ooh. Don't even. Fish pee in that all day. <laughs> and there's dead people. I've never heard that. Fish pee in it every day. That's awesome. Yeah. And there's dead people. <sighs> that's great I will say the the only bit of reading that book the only bit of satisfaction that you get from it and spoilers for anybody who hasn't read the book but I still encourage you to read the book yeah um, the you only, can get it A to Z please. yes A to Z uh, or the, here yes right? you can still get it here yes yeah, so you can still get it here, here at the Lincoln County Historical Museum the only um, satisfaction you get after reading all of this is you know she did die alone yes she I mean, did yeah. yeah nobody was holding her hand not even a nurse Nope. Nobody was in the room. They were just left her in there to die, basically. Which is what she did with countless people at the yep. poor farm. That's right. Yeah. Um, but still, yeah, like you said, never got prosecuted. And if you go to her grave, it's the only one without snow on it because she's burning in hell. <laughs> <laughs> well, hasn't that uh, tombstone been vandalized or messed with over the years? I don't know. Okay. Also, I thought I heard somewhere, but that could be just an urban legend that could be. You know, people I could repeatedly totally mess that. with it. I could see that being an urban legend. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I could also see it being accurate. Mm-hmm. But yeah, she hit her daughter in the head with a cast iron skillet. And... Killed her deader than hell. Yep, dead. Deader than a doornail. Deader than dead. <laughs> oh. And got away with it. Yeah. That's that's the big one. That, I think yep. that's one of the big ones that, you know, everybody brings up. Yeah. And cook, of course. But there are others that are... That's right. A little odd, little make you wonder. Okay, so you know Bill Jeffers. Mm. Okay, president of the Union Pacific Railroad. Had an adopted daughter. Her name's Eileen Kelfer, or Ke- excuse me, Keller Jeffers. She, Bill Jeffers, president of the Union Pacific Railroad, obviously fairly wealthy, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Dies, leaves his money to her. She is 61 years old. She falls in love with a man by the name of Thomas Yeager. I wonder if he was a Yeager from Yeager, Yeager? I don't know. He was a judge. Hmm. Well, he's 47. Cougar. <laughs> that could be. That could be. You never know. <laughs> they get married, and they're on a honeymoon cruise to Hawaii. When she mysteriously falls overboard and is never seen again. Hmm. He says, I went down below deck and left her up on the deck. She must have gotten dizzy and fallen overboard. But guess who got the money? And guess who was never found ever again? I don't buy it. What do you mean you don't buy it? I don't buy it. I don't think he went below deck and she just mysteriously Well, no, he didn't. Yeah. No, no. He, he made her fish food. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So he inherited the money and then skipped town and nobody's seen him since, is what you're saying? Or? Well, no. He, 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 uh, um, the official uh, report was that she fell overboard, so he didn't have to go anywhere. He stayed in California. Yeah. Oh, they were in California. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's where I they, see. That's where they met. Bill Jeffers moved to California. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay, but yeah. still, yeah, he was... That's... So, yeah. Oops. Oops. My brand new 61-year-old bride that is a millionaire fell overboard. Here's the deal, okay? Like if, I mean, because nowadays that would, like you guys said, would be made into a date light episode, yeah. right? Yeah, Right. But she was 61. And what year was this? Uh, this was in like 1965. They probably, oh, 65, that's 65? it? 65? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's pretty recent. Mm-hmm. Dang. Yeah, I was thinking a long time ago. I was too. Like 20s or something. Yeah. 65, huh? That, that's exactly what I was thinking. Okay, so still, my theory still holds true. If he just would have waited a couple years, he wouldn't have had to gone through the whole speculation thing. 
she probably would have died anyway. Yeah. This is true. This is very true. So maybe he didn't. Maybe she had a heart attack and fell overboard. It's possible. She was 61 years old. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe she was just so overwhelmed with... Joy. With joy. And, <laughs> like, I mean, she probably... I mean, you know, she got a new husband who's 20 was, years younger yeah, than her yeah. and can... Last a little bit longer than six year olds. This is before the blue bill. Yeah, yeah. And so maybe they it was a little too much. <laughs> little too much. He had a heart attack, staring off at the sea and fell over. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe massive stroke. Maybe he pushed her. Maybe he pushed her. I I'm pretty sure he pushed her. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he pushed her. Yeah. yeah. I mean, or, especially their honeymoon cruise. He couldn't wait. Right. He couldn't right? wait a week. <laughs> right. He's like, oh, she's gone. Yeah. Oh no, I'm she's not. Gone. Mm, no, I'm not listening to this bitch chew. I'm not listening. I don't. I can't sleep next to her. <laughs> I'm done. Couldn't even wait a week, a month, a year. No. I mean, if you're in it for the millions, it, not to say that I would ever do this because I'm happily married. But if I wasn't and I was going to, she's go not on, worth millions anyway. So. No, she's not. No, God, no. Um, <laughs> I, I, that sounded terrible. Neither am I. Um, but. If I were going to play that long game of finding an old millionaire woman, right? If you're if you're going to kill her for the money, don't do it right away. You no, wait. you wait. You wait it out a little bit. You make, kind of got to look at the long game in this aspect. Yeah, make the family <laughs> live off think the money really, for a while. Exactly. Live off the money for a while. You know, find out which one's the hot housekeeper that'll help you because <laughs> there's always one. And if Hollywood has taught me everything, anything, there's always a hot housekeeper that's going to help you. Or the game of Clue. Or the game of Clue. Yes. God. I can't think of the actress's name, but she was hot. Anyway, <laughs> as a young boy watching Clue, I was just like, girls aren't icky anymore. <laughs> girls aren't icky anymore. <laughs> you know, you, you reach a certain age where you're just like, oh, wow. Maybe I want those cooties. <laughs> Maybe. I do. Um, but you find that hot housekeeper to help you. You play, yeah, you wait at least a year, make the family think you're actually in it for love. Right. And then, yeah, she, maybe you... Pump her into a heart attack. <laughs> I, you know, like you could go on a second cruise, maybe of Europe. Yes. Yeah, yeah like your one year anniversary. Yeah, like, let's yeah. go on another cruise, honey. And then it's a little more feasible. That, right. I mean, no matter what, they're going to look at you. And by then she's 62, 63. 62, 63, yeah. I mean, if she falls overboard under mysterious circumstances, no matter what, they're going to be looking at Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nowadays, apparently. Right. That's why you need the hot housekeeper as an alibi to say she saw you. Something. I don't know. Now, if it's any consolation. Yeah. If it's any consolation. He died in 2008, so it hasn't been very long. Holy shit. That's wow. recent. Now, any consolation, he lost his judgeship after 15 more years because no one would trust him anymore. No kidding. Yeah. Because yeah. of it. Mm-hmm. Imagine that. I, he probably didn't care because he had, he had money. millions. That's what I'm saying. He's like, whatever. I got more time for golf. Right, with millions like, in the sailing. bank. Oh, I don't. I don't have to sit in judgment anymore. Oh no. Whatever will I do? As he dabs his tears with hundreds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, oh, I'm ruined. Uh, whatever shall I do? <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Well, I'm gonna go hop in my Bentley and drive home. <laughs> See you, losers. Oh wait, I don't have to sell this either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wow. When you originally told us that story, I was picturing some, like, old, long time yeah, ago. 1900. Yes. Yeah, or something like that. Not during yeah. modern forensics. No. <laughs> exactly. Or, yeah. Well, wouldn't that, I, I don't know anything about forensics, but you would think that that would be hard to prove if there's no body. Right. And you push her off the deck. Right. And if somebody, even if they do that analysis where they get a footprint or dust from your shoe or whatever. Still a probable doubt. Yeah, I was yeah. up there with her. She said she wanted to stare at the ocean for a little bit. I went back to the cabin to get ready for bed. Nowadays, maybe the they'd have cam. Be yeah, maybe. They yeah, have nowadays, cameras. yeah, there's probably cameras. In the sixties, they wouldn't have. You would have had to have hoped that no one saw you from another deck. Yeah, and if I mean, if it's late at night enough, or and I mean, it's a cruise, so there's stuff going on. There's dinners. There's dancing. There's nobody's out there on the deck paying attention. Sure. Yeah. Wait for that right moment. That's true. Uh, you know what's kind of funny is. He didn't even wait till they were like out of sight of California, barely. Really? Cat- really? Catalina Island. Oh my God. I ain't even taking her to Hawaii. Screw this. He's like, I yeah. can't do it. Yep. I can't. <laughs> she chews so loud. Right. I am. She snores at night. Oh my gosh. So I guess he'll be coming home. Well, I mean, after. Uh, well, After I Hawaii. Like, I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, you can't get off the ship. Yeah. Hawaii, well, the, right? Tickets non-refundable. <laughs> and 
are they really gonna just go back and dock? No. They're no. Gonna keep. They might. So, okay, wait a second. If it was that close, okay, Catalina Island, why didn't they ever find a body? It's not like. I don't know. Well, I that's mean, what happens when you got concrete around your feet. Yeah, could know. be. I don't know. Oh. Or I mean, it could just the current may have taken her out. Well, there were a lot of sharks over there too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So, and if it's in, the, like, I if know. it's in the well, no, I mean, according to Shark Week, if it's in, <laughs> no, but really, if it's in the right time of year, because sharks, because the migration, the migration exactly. up and down the west coast, if it's the right time of year and they're in the area, you throw her in the water, she starts thrashing. Nom, 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 nom. Yep, there ain't nobody. Oh. If there is, it's pieces. Yep. And yeah. And if the story's plausible, they, and you have no evidence to refute it, I mean, the benefit of the doubt. You know, what can you do? Yeah, nothing you can do. Yeah, do you think you he do. did it? Yeah. I oh, think yeah. he did it. You think, he think did that. it's unanimous? Yeah. He would have been guilty if he we were the did that judge shit. and jury. <laughs> yeah. He's OJ. He, he did that shit. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, what else you got? Dora Agnes Kitzmiller. Okay. Doris. Doris. So we're talking 18, eh, about 1900. Okay. I, I like that you're adding the years now that. I'm... Yeah, about 1900. <laughs> about 1900. Okay. Because now I can picture it better. You know, everybody goes hunting with their wife. No. no. <laughs> Hell no. Especially in 1900, right? You know, dresses. Oh, God. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Everybody goes hunting. Everybody. Well, they got skunked hunting. They just couldn't find any birds. But... They went to get back in the, the buggy, and Doris had the gun. Okay. Because, you know, she was hunting, right? Right. She uh, goes to put the shotgun in the, the buggy, and the horses jerk, and the gun goes off and kills her. But Mr. Kitzmiller doesn't see a thing because he was trying to stop the horses. Then when he turns around, his poor wife's dead. Where did she get shot? In the body. Like in the <laughs> chest or... Uh, I don't think it's... Oh, mm. oh yeah, 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 yeah. She got shot in the head. Oh, that's convenient. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Now, n- around that time, especially, and this happened here? Yeah. In this area? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, Nebraska in 1900, obviously it wasn't like it is now. So, there is a possibility a wife went hunting to help. Maybe so, yeah, yeah. And Good enough. But if they're a frontier woman or, you know, grew up rural country whatever they know how to use a gun right. they know not to stick that barrel in their in their face right so you're gonna lay it in yeah and if you lay it in are it's you pointing s- away from you and you're super short so that's how it got you in that right it's amazing how a shotgun would go boom right <laughs> right in the mouth <laughs> i mean it blew her face off literally. oh my, oh my god. god are there pictures of that no <laughs> but okay. there is a picture of her on the on a wagon Oh yeah, there she yeah, is. Yeah. Okay. And and in the paper it was a sad event. A sad event. Yeah. Woman blows her face off. That's really sad. <laughs> That's very sad. Not horrific or no. No, just look wow. at the husband. So uh, nothing happened <coughs> either. Do you think that would be a date line one? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And again, and well, it's nineteen hundred. Friend forensics weren't what they are. No. But no. still, fingerprints. It's his gun too. Shot, yeah, he, they could have tested for whether he'd shot anything. Well, they were both out hunting. Well, that's true. We took a couple, we both took a couple shots at birds. When did this happen, is my question. 1900? Yeah. Like, what month? June. June. What birds are you hunting in June? Well, there was no hunting season. So. Yeah. Oh, shit, okay. <laughs> You're like, hey, pheasant season. No, I mean, they're out, I mean, it's 1900. Yeah, you gotta, dove season. It's, we gotta eat season. Now, it did say that she had never shot. According to him, he, she had never shot. That's why her gun was still loaded. Huh. Okay. I, I call bullshit. Yeah. Because even on the simplest level of this, I've, I've been hunting like a handful of times. Like maybe two or three times, okay? And even then, my husband takes the gun and makes sure that everything is unloaded and that I don't deal with any of that. I would think most men would. Maybe, maybe she, not. May, maybe I don't she know. Was, maybe she was tough. Maybe. Maybe. If she was tough, if though, she she'd know tough. how to handle exactly. the gun. Exactly. Exactly. She'd know not to stick the gun in her face and blow it off. I, I at least know that. Hey, now, think about a shotgun. Mm-hmm. So the only way you're going to blow your own head off is 
if you can reach the trigger or it's triggered by something mm-hmm. right. in the buggy, which means you're going to have to put it in with the barrel facing you. Barrel out, right. Who does that? No one. No, unless you're an idiot. Now, the only time I've ever heard of anybody doing that to themselves was during Pioneer Times, and it was a black powder, so it had you know the, the big caulking mechanism, mm-hmm. and they pulled it out of the, out of the buggy, and it got caught partway and then went off. Yeah. Hmm. But even then. But a shotgun. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, anybody who's ever handled the gun, and especially a rifle when you're putting it away, even if you know it's unloaded, you always point the barrel away from people, away from yourself. Right. Because you never know. You right. just never know. Yeah. And if this woman was out hunting with her husband, she should have known how to handle a shotgun. Exactly. I would think so. So that was, that's another, Yeah. That That's one, mysterious. there's some doubt in my mind that could be on that one just a little bit because of circumstances, weather, whatever. But I don't know. I think I'd convict him. I, I would have convicted him too. But see, there's no money involved with that one. So the motive, I she mean, unless just, he was just tired she of her. just been a bitch. This <laughs> last time, Dora. <laughs> she just keeps nagging me. Right? I tried to shoot the bird, Dora. Oh, my God. I told you not to say anything. Right? You, you scared that deer. When you said, run! Oh, Dora. <laughs> I'll shoot you in the face in the paper. I'll just say it's a sad event, Dora. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> Ain't a jury in the world that convict me, Dora. Everyone in town knows you. <laughs> and it was those times, too. You get a jury of, of his peers, like... Oh, yeah, we knew Dora. Her pie at the church social was always shitty. Not good. Not yeah, guilty. He was henpecked. <laughs> we, I mean, not saying you should have shot her in the face, Jim, but I understand. <laughs> Shit. Where the hell? It's going to be a... I mean, her family would have liked the casket to have been open, but, you know, I mean, you got to take them shots when you get them. <laughs> Perfect lined up one ain't coming every day. Nobody was around. Oh. <laughs> right? Yeah. Nobody oh. was around. Like, nobody was around, man. I took my chance. <laughs> Got her in the face. Fuck. <laughs> it was the only chance I had. Yeah, it was that one shot, man. It did scare the horses, too. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Exactly. He was legitimately saying the horses yeah. were scared. Yeah. yeah. So he wasn't lying. <laughs> so, so here's another good one. It's All not right. so much a mystery. <laughs> okay. But, but yeah. it would suck really bad. All right. Okay. So, have you guys ever heard of the girly pool? Swimming pool? No. Yeah. No. The G-E-R-L-E, not girly, right. but girly. Was the, they had a, basically, this guy had a swimming pool in, on his property, opened it up to the public for money. Okay. So, great, you know? Nice diving pool, nice pool all around. One bad thing. No lifeguards. I don't know about that. No. Okay. But he, wanted to, he wanted to make it so that people could swim even in the dark. Oh, so this is 19, probably 32, 34. Okay. They have lights <laughs> strung over the top of the pool. <gasps> so it gets electrocuted. Oh, God. It's, it's wonderful. I mean, they're going, literally going all over. These wires are going all over oh, with lights. That's awful. So kind of like, not like Christmas lights like we think of wires of lights, but... Back then, it was like actual light bulbs. Like big, wire. yeah, like yeah, industrial big light fixtures right. with a light bulb. But they were strung, you know, <laughs> drunk, 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 yeah. drunk, 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 all over. <laughs> Poor Albert Stack. <laughs> He's got to oh, change the light bulb. He's got to change the light bulbs. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, how do you do that? Ask him. It didn't work very well. <laughs> uh, because he kind of got a little close to the water when he was changing the light bulb. Boom! Dead. Oh, man. Yep. Um, he was 14 years old. Oh. oh! Well, now we can't make fun of Albert. No! Poor Al. <laughs> Would that be cleansing the gene pool? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, well, it depends. If it was an accident and he just happened to get electrocuted, then it's a sad story. If his slow ass put a metal ladder in that pool <laughs> to climb up to get that light, you know he deserves it. Then, then yeah, I mean if you're, I'll, I'll change the light bulbs. No, Albert, no. Okay, here's the other side. Grab the wood ladder, Albert. <laughs> huh? 
<laughs> We're sorry. We are sorry to the Stack, Stack family, family. If anybody from the Stack, <laughs> that was my great uncle. You son of a bitch. <laughs> he was the nicest man we knew, right? <laughs> <laughs> you Poor doing? Albert. No, I I feel okay. I feel bad because it was a fourteen year old kid, but probably um, just doing what that well doing a job. Idiot right? who built he that pool to, with the lights told him to do. Exactly, trying yeah. to feed his family. His mom's got rickets. <laughs> <laughs> she don't she can't work. It's, Dad went out working on the drop, railroad. He had to drop out of school. Had to drop out of school. Dad's up in Cheyenne somewhere with his other family <laughs> that he met while he was making the railroad. Oh, Poor Albert's like, all I know how to do is change light bulbs, Ma. But I promise you, I'm going to be the best damn light bulb changer there is. I'll be remembered. You were, Albert. <laughs> And that, I mean, did it say in there how? No. Just, yeah, it electrocuted. just said he was changing the light bulbs and got electrocuted. electrocuted. So, yeah, I don't know if he was standing in a puddle or if... No. Oh, man, I wish they had more details on that so we knew. <laughs> oh. Okay, so here's, here's, here's a good one. All right. Um, so, here is... Got to get it back here. Calvin Rose. Calvin Rose. Calvin Rose. What year? Um, 1897. Okay. Okay. People are dying for stupid reasons, and it's amazing that you're living. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay, so Calvin Rose liked to drink. Like a lot of people from North Platte did back then. <laughs> right now. <laughs> and right now. Yeah. So, he's a farmer. Okay. Farmer, okay? Decides to come in and get drunk. Well, he meets up with... I'm guessing in the bar by some young people in town and they decide they're going to get him really drunk, really drunk. So they get him super intoxicated and they shave off half his beard, make him look like, and then take him to one of the local bars and make him into a free show to show off. Okay. Cause that's what you do, you know? They didn't think that was enough. They kept him drunk like that for two days. Two solid days. And then decided that they had had enough fun with him because he wasn't doing very well. So they put him in his wagon to send him back to his farm. Well, some people found his wagon wandering around Lincoln County with him in the bottom of it. And he was in pretty bad shape. So who? We don't know who. Figured out that he had a stricture in the bladder. So he had a problem peeing. Which, when you're drunk, would be really bad. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really bad. And so they tried operating, which made it worse. Um, and eventually, poor Mr. Rose died. Now. I would say from alcohol poisoning. Yeah. Not according to the coroner. I mean, if you're sauced for two days. Well, oh, I, I believe you. I'm yeah. guessing that's mostly what happened. Because you wouldn't die this quick. But supposedly, he tried to make it so he could be. Oh, God. How? Um, according to the coroner. According to the coroner. <laughs> Uh, careful examination of the immediate cause of death was blood poisoning caused by puncturing the urethra <laughs> with an instrument in his own hands, carelessly used by himself. <laughs> so, in layman's term, he was trying to knock out the blockage with a stick or something. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And damaged his urethra. Yeah. And oh, my. Caused blood poisoning and killed him. Oh man! Um, it didn't kill him real fast. <laughs> oh, um, I would say. Let me look here again. I gotta look. June third. Um, I think it was like a day or two. Oh man! Yeah, that's and, horrible. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't good. No. <laughs> and those kids that decided they were going to get him drunk and keep him drunk and really caused all the problems? Yeah. Nothing happened to him. 
They didn't Imagine go, that. They didn't go no. to juvie. They didn't do nothing because they didn't have such a thing as juvie. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, he he could have told them no. He could have said, "I don't want to get that drunk." You know what I mean? It was kind of his own. And I mean, they didn't. They're not the ones who are just like having trouble peeing, fellow. Let me let me go ahead and get <laughs> the stick and just jam that in there. Guess how long they kept him at the bar drinking? No. Two days. Well, two, two days, but for one bar. Mm-hmm. 12 hours solid drink. Oh my god. What? 12 hours solid drink. I would be dead. Yeah. Well, he pretty much did die. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, he is. <laughs> hey, smart asses. But not from the drinking. <laughs> like, and I have to wonder if it was because he was drunk. Yeah. You know, because a normal straight sober mind wouldn't think, I'm having trouble peeing, let me go ahead and just jam something up in there. And, I don't know. know, I could see some people doing that though, because you get that desperate, like, oh my god, I have to pee. And you can sober up pretty damn fast if you need to. Yeah, I don't know. Be like, I can't pee, let me take this stick or hairpin or whatever. Oh, god. <laughs> How would you like, uh, so this is North Platts past, but also California's past, because that one was from California. Yeah. yeah. So those are some of the mysterious. We have a few others here and there that you could learn about. Mm-hmm. Um, mysterious deaths by gas or electricity um, in the basement. Yeah. You know, I got to change a light bulb again. <laughs> Die in the basement kind of thing. <laughs> you know that smell? That's, you know that smell that's coming from the basement? Yeah, that's Grandpa. Oh. oh my god! Really? There's a story like no, that? No, no. Oh, well, okay. you know, electricity. Kit. Oh, I got you. I, okay, I got you. I'm like somebody was just like left their grandpa down there. Oh. Uh, um. So yeah. Oh, by the way, uh, William, William Campbell. Mm-hmm. The question is, in the crowd, was he pushed into the propeller of the airplane, or did he accidentally walk into the propeller? Wait, what is this? What? Yeah. So. Um, William Campbell, William Arthur Campbell, in 1924, um, was building an airplane in his garage. Because that's what everybody does, mm-hmm. right? You build an airplane in your garage, right? Actually, my uncle does. See? <laughs> I'm not even so, joking. So, the question is, <laughs> did he piss his neighbors off so bad with trying to build and run this airplane that they pushed him into his, air, into his own propeller, or did he walk into it? Hmm... I can see both. I can see both. Or you stumble. You turn around, you stumble. and He was carrying an axe in his hand when he died. What Why? Was he? What that's was he going to do? That's what everybody wants to know. Did uh, He was in the garage. What year was this? It was 1924. 1924. I mean, given the evidence, maybe he was going to they, chop some... They, they thought that he misjudged the distance between the propeller and his entryway into his garage. Oh, well, that's possible. Why? But why would his engine be running? Yeah. Hold on, I gotta go get something. I'm gonna come yeah, back. Yeah, I'm gonna Meanwhile, go chop some wood. Let me warm up the engine and the plane. I- I'm gonna let this go, and I'm gonna I want to see something. I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Or maybe he was swinging the axe. His neighbors. Did he have a furnace in his garage? And went to go, plane? and it was. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. You can go see his grave out at our cemetery. Huh. Yep. Does it say on it, died by plane? Prop? No. Propeller? It just <laughs> says father. Father. Yeah. <laughs> His wife died in 1970, he in 1924. That gives you an idea. Wow. Something happened. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Huh. Huh. So, is the moral of the story, don't build a propeller, or don't build an airplane in your garage, or don't walk into a propeller that's running? I would say the latter. Yeah, don't walk into the running propeller. Yeah, it might be. Or don't let your neighbors or, push you into it. Yeah. And how did he still have an axe in his hand after getting whacked up by a propeller? Well, I mean, they were probably it was probably just an old wooden propeller, so probably just bludgeon, you know, Should blunt be. force trauma. In twenty four? Yeah. Yeah. If he's building it in his house, you would think that it was just a wooden propeller. No. I Could have been metal, but it was probably more than likely wood. I don't know. Would it have been? Hmm. I don't know. 24? No, it would. It could have been, but it could have been, I don't know. Yeah. Because we're right in that weird time period where it could have been wood, it could have been metal. It could have been, yeah. could have been either. Either way, I mean, 
walked into it or was pushed into it. Or pushed into did it. Did he piss off his neighbors a lot? I, we don't did know. He ha- did Was there bad? I feel like we needed more information. Yeah, we need more information. Probably why there was no, no inquest even into the murder. Mm. I mean, into the death. Into the death. Just looked like an accident. Yeah. Oh, crazy. That's a smart way to do it. William? Would that, what? Yeah, William. William. Yeah. Oh, yeah. crazy William just building this claim. Yeah, just walk walk into it. We don't need to look into this one at all. Nope. Oh, crazy, crazy Bill. Bill. <laughs> with his plane, his ideas are flying. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah. The, no, those are some interesting ones. And mysterious. Yeah. Especially, you know, I mean, some of them, the, the, the Jeffers lady that, Mysterious because it was never that's solved, but that's not mysterious. We know no, what happened. We there. know what happened. We know what happened. <laughs> we that, know. that would be why he never was a judge for very long. After exactly. Maybe. Yeah. Dateline, where were you then? <laughs> yeah. Now, walking into propeller. That could happen. Accident. Shotgun. Blast to the face. Face. Yeah, <laughs> that one's core. That yeah, one that one's a little to iffy. Like no. Yeah, but could happen. Could happen. Electrocuted while changing a light bulb. That was just a sad story. That was just a sad story. Poor kid. Poor kid. Didn't stand a chance. No. No. Poor kid. Probably just doing what some... What somebody told him. Doing a job. Yeah. Doing a job. (laughs) Ma's sitting there with the rickets waiting for him to get home. (laughs) Never gets home. (laughs) Never gets home. (laughs) Shit. What's that smell? (laughs) (laughs) Barbecue by the pool. Oh my god, that was awful! Well, oh, my boy brings me home a plate of brisket. Oh my I'd go myself, god. but I can't, you know, because the rickets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are all going to That was home. horrible. We are all Like, we were home. hoping. <laughs> Thank you, Jim, for. <laughs> like, You're welcome. Like, we were hoping this would be, ooh, that was eerie, eerie and mysterious, and it just turned into making fun of dead people. So, <laughs> which is fine. Which does that surprise you when it's the three of us? No, no, God, no. <laughs> uh. Yeah, you know, I, as far as being really eerie deaths around here, I haven't found any. Um, I know there's probably some. But what about eerie stories? Eerie stories, no. None. Well, you always get the ones from the ranch. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. The one where they see Buffalo Bill. Yeah. Shake his hand. Mm. Yeah, so I've heard that one. Um, but beyond that, you know, I just don't. We're just such a nice town. Huh. Hmm. Well, on that note, <laughs> I know that we've got Ginger has to take off, and we should probably wrap up here. Um, but that was fun. Thank you, Jim. Yes, You're welcome. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. Yeah, we'll have to do this again. Maybe not even Halloween. Just do this again. Talk about weird occurrences <laughs> in and around North Platte. What? Next Why are you time, laughing? No, next time I'm sitting here thinking, like, I am going to get the app when we come in here. And I'm going to show Jim. I'm like, look, Jim, they're talking. For those who don't know, we were talking about an app, a ghost app on your phone that's supposed to be able to record ghost voices. I say it's GPS coordinated and it knows what's there. Okay, first off, he doesn't believe in ghosts, okay? He's, like, anti, like, nope, nope. Like, we've had multiple conversations about this, okay? And I'm on the fence. I don't know. So he is She's just... all for it. No, I'm... I don't know. Some of it can be explained. Mm-mm. I don't Some know. Some of it can. I'm kind of on the fence, too. Uh, but more towards, like... I, I don't know. Like, for the most part, I, it, like, is there somebody sitting here? Or the spirit of these cows behind us here? <laughs> I, I don't... I don't know about that. Okay? I don't know if the spirit of the woman who used to wear that dress over there is, like, watching us. But at the same time, I've walked into houses or a room or something where you just get that weird, eerie feeling. Like you're being yes. watched or there's something there. Yes. Okay. So, back when the Visitor's Bureau used to be over in the old Kmart, mm-hmm. okay, it was in the INS building. Remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, you remember yeah, yeah. when we were over yeah. there? They had jail cells back there. Like, legit jail cells. Mm-hmm. Okay? Oh, by the way, there are there's a house in town that has jail cells in the basement. Just yeah. letting you know. <laughs> Yeah. I want to be in that. Oh, area. and he, the thing he's not telling you is there's no reason why they should be there. Yeah. yeah. That's it wasn't ever a county jail or nothing. anything like that. No. Nothing. But, <laughs> so that thing actually had legit jail cells. And obviously it was ig- ing- immigrants who were in there. And so, like, I would walk back there sometimes to get something. And the energy that you would just get in there was 
eerie and spooky and just it was weird so we literally had somebody come in and sage the place Hmm. I mean it was weird and here's another one like my best friend and I were walking we used to walk forever and we were walking down Buffalo Bill the viaduct heading back into town and we were talking about her mom well her mom passed away many years ago and there was a truck on the other side of the road in the field and nobody was there Nobody. And all of a sudden, the lights go on, off, on, off. And she goes, Ginger? I go, yep, I saw that. (laughs) There's no reason why that should have happened. Nobody was there. Nobody. Was this before pre-key fob? Yes. No, it wasn't before pre-key fob. It's key fob. It it was a tractor. Well, they have key fobs for those. I don't know. No. Nobody was around. I think Nobody was around. I, I'm just saying, like, that. that's an easy... Like, I'm not saying you're not telling the truth. Like, it, please don't misunderstand. Oh, no, I'm not calling you a liar. As you saw it, sure. Yeah. No, <laughs> and, and, it, and <laughs> it very well may have been something. Like I said, I've walked into rooms and had that weird, eerie feeling. Yes. But as far as, like, the spirits of our ancestors watching us do whatever we're... Yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know. Because if so, then Grandma's disappointed. <laughs> In a lot of things. <laughs> you know? Oh, grandson. Oh, grandson. <laughs> like, oh, no. <laughs> Meanwhile, Grandpa's just like, get it! No, I'm sorry. <laughs> that was terrible. Grandpa's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's my boy. boy. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know about that. But I, I don't know. I guess I haven't experienced anything. That is probably the weirdest one that I've experienced, is the light thing. Because we were talking about her mom. We were talking about her. And then that happened. Hmm. It was weird. I will agree with you. It was weird. You've never had anything like that with all of this history stuff, all of this? Absolutely none. None out here? Nothing like that? I'm serious. Seriously true. Hmm. Hmm. Because I heard stuff. It's called a building creaking. Or it's called Mr. Rogers over there is like saying hi. I don't know. It's just Mr. Rogers? It was just a name, not the real Mr. Rogers. That would be odd. I mean, he was a nice guy and all. Mr. Rogers, if you're with us, please say something into the camera. Because they say that, like, recording devices are supposed to be able to catch spirit voices. So I'm going to be digging over the audio of this one, especially when we invoke the name of Mr. Rogers. Rogers. If I hear neighborhood, I'm shitting myself right there. (laughs) Just real quiet. Neighborhood. Like, he was there. I don't know why. He was right. Right? He'll be like, no, nope, it was something No else. reason for Mr. Rogers to be in Nebraska, but... It, 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 was, it was the wind. It was the wind. It could, could have been the wind. You. The heater is on. I My heard dog it kick sneezed. On. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it'll be. He'll blame it on Daisy. Yep. 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 Well, if we hear any evidence or, after pouring through this audio, we'll let you know. <laughs> You're going to be meticulous. Just going every Poor Mr. Rogers. Right? <laughs> That's never... Right, Mr. Okay. Rogers just sitting here like, you made fun of that poor boy for getting electrocuted. Like, well, sorry, Fred, but he shouldn't have used the metal ladder. <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, All right, well, All right. that's been North Platte in a nutshell. Thank you, Jim, You're so much. Yes, thank You're you. welcome. Um, I know it's the off-season, right? Right. For the museum, but if uh, we can get this up, I'm sure, quickly. Yeah. If you're watching this on Halloween, day or night... Head out to the Lincoln County Historical Museum for their haunted uh, village yep. experience. So scary it made a woman pee her pants. Pretty scary. So there you go. And uh, come out an hour early so the kids can trick or treat. It is a fundraiser for the softball uh, girls out of the college too. So yes. you know when you come out here, that's helping them as well. Right. It allows them to travel to their games outside of North Platte, all over. So help out. And if you're watching it after Halloween, uh, you can still help out the softball team. You can still help out the Lincoln County Historical Museum. Uh, when does your season open again? May 1st is when our regular season opens, but we have Christmas coming up. Okay. Oh, yeah. Um, That's right. So our Christmas Village drive through goes all of uh, December through Christmas Eve. Um, 12,000 people came out last year. Yeah. Through, so it's worth it, I think. I, I, as scary as the Haunted Village is, is as endearing as the Christmas village is if that makes sense yeah you know what i mean like the great job out here it's so beautiful last year uh, one of the first nights uh, suv went through and they had their windows down and i heard a little kid it sounded literally like this this is the best place ever (laughs) (laughs) that's cute all right so come check it out for christmas uh jim once again thank you so much thank you guys